Hello, my name is Jessica Lindsay, and I am the Associate Professor of Clarinet at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. In this video, I will discuss the 2022-23 North Carolina Bandmasters Association All-State Etude for Clarinet for grades 11-12. This year, the All-State Etude is an excerpt, excerpt from the Clarinet Concerto by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. The Mozart Clarinet Concerto is one of the most famous pieces for any clarinetist to perform, and it is well loved by many who appreciate classical music. I was so fortunate to hear the Mozart Clarinet Concerto played twice live in the last few years, once by Taylor Marino, the wonderful principal clarinet of the Charlotte Symphony, and last month by Anthony McGill, who is the principal clarinet of the New York Philharmonic. He played it with the Asheville Symphony, and a number of my clarinet students from UNC Charlotte and I sat in the fourth row. It was a spectacular performance. So I'm excited to give you a few things to think about as you are practicing this work for your all-state etude. The first thing to think about is how to play in the classical style of music. We often refer to folks like Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, and Mozart in the broad genre of classical music. But in fact, we have many different time periods within classical music we can talk about the Baroque era and then the Baroque style, the classical style, the Romantic era and the Romantic style, and even a more modern era and a modern style of playing music. Since Mozart is the classical period, is he's from the classical period of classical music, we'll talk about the classical style of playing music today. So in this style, the classical style, we always start trills on the upper note of the trill we don't start the trill on the note that's written. Um, in the classical style, notes marked staccato are separated, but are never pecky or, or terribly short. In the classical style, we very rarely accent one specific note in the phrase. We work to keep all notes smoothly connected and make dynamic changes without a strong accent or start to the note. Additionally, we grow louder or softer on every eighth note in a very subtle way when we um, express our dynamics. Also in the classical style, we work to achieve um, a sigh when we have two note phrases, and we usually emphasize the first note of those two note phrases. And one last thing about music in the classical style, um, it may look simple, but it's certainly not easy. We work really diligently to make our fingers move incredibly evenly and smoothly. And to do this, we often employ different rhythms in our practice. So we can use dotted rhythms and we can also change 16th note rhythms um, into triplet rhythms. Let's look at measure 74 to remember that in the classical style, we start trills on the note above the written note. I remind myself of this by writing a small note head before the note that I'll trill. And this means that I'll start on the E instead of on the D. You should hear this in the recording and I'll demonstrate it for you now. Next, let's take a look at the opening clarinet phrase of this concerto. Even before we start playing our phrase, we can hear in our head what the orchestra or piano is playing before we come in. Remember that a concerto is for a soloist and a large ensemble. This piece was originally written with orchestral accompaniment, but many people perform it with piano accompaniment. One great way to work on this is to use a piano accompaniment found on YouTube or other internet sites. Most of the pianists on YouTube will play a four bar introduction, and that can really help you set the tempo in your mind. Be sure to hear the music the accompanist is providing throughout this audition excerpt. One other helpful note when you're using a program like YouTube to play along with accompaniments is that you can slow down the tempo so you can practice it more slowly and gradually speed up the tempo, which is important whenever you're preparing music. We noticed when the clarinet enters, 
that we have some staccato notes written in our first two measures. We don't really play these notes very short. We want them to be separate, but very resonant and full. Let me demonstrate. So we want to have a little lilt and bounce, but we don't want to play it super, super short, like we might if we were playing in a more modern style. So we want to make sure it's resonant, but has separation. And in the classical style, we very rarely accent one note in a phrase. We work to keep all notes smoothly connected and make dynamic changes without a strong start to any particular note. One great way to practice this and our articulation skills is to lightly articulate, and sometimes we use the word tongue when we you know, interchange that with articulate, so we can articulate every eighth note in the opening phrase. And that's what I've marked here. You might notice that this is the same essential rhythm and notes lining up, but to have a light articulation on every note. By doing this, we can work on a few different techniques. Articulating can help us remember to have steady air. It can also help us hear the subdivision of the beat. Furthermore, we can use this articulation method to work on gradual but steady dynamic change. We can imagine that each eighth note is slightly louder or quieter than the one that follows it, depending on whether we're doing a crescendo or a decrescendo. This will help us grow louder or softer on every note in a, every eighth note in a subtle way. Think about all of these items as I play this for you. So I'll play this example down here. So hopefully you could hear me changing my dynamic on every eighth note. I'll do it once more. In this audition excerpt, continue this type of practicing anytime you have phrases with whole notes, half notes, or dotted quarter notes. It's a great technique. For the next phrase, we can use this articulation method to so sort out our subdivision dynamics and also to work on understanding more about the two note sigh in classical music. Like, ah, I just finished my audition and I did a great job, that kind of sigh. Um, in measure three down here of the clarinet part, we have this sigh or sighing motive. We want the F to be slightly more emphasized than the D. And we want the second presentation of this motive to be even a little bit more than the first, but again, the D will be less emphasized than the F, okay? So I'll demonstrate this sighing idea for you. It's kind of easy, if we're not familiar with the classical style, to land a little too heavy on the second note. But that's not what we want to do. We want to have more emphasis on the first note than the second note. And another way that we could practice this is to use um, the same method of articulating eighth notes um, for the rhythm, for the duration of the rhythm as it's written. So I'll show you this here first. And then this is also kind of a sigh motive. It is two notes, it's longer than this one, but we have um, marked here clearly that we want this note to be more and then decrescendo to this note. So we'll practice it by using this method. We want the loudest note of this phrase, the most emphasized note, to be the beginning of this half note, the C. 
And we can practice that by articulating each eighth note of the phrase and thinking about how the dynamics unfold. Let me play the whole phrase now um, with this subdivision. Music in the classical style may look simple, but simple is not always easy. We need to work to make our fingers move incredibly evenly and smoothly. While there are lots of challenging measures in this audition excerpt, I think that measures 108 through 111 can be fairly tricky. One way of practicing these sections is to change the rhythms of the written notes. Often we will dot or lengthen the first note and add a flag to shorten the second note of two note groups. And we can just look at, I'll play a couple of these up here, and I'm gonna make this note longer and this note shorter, this note longer, this note shorter. Sometimes we call this like kind of, you know, swinging through this, but it's really just a dotted, a dotted rhythm that we practice. So I'll start here. All right, so hopefully you could clearly hear me playing these notes longer and the notes in between shorter. <clears throat> Another way that we could practice these sections is to change the rhythmic structure from groups of four into groups of three. This changes where the emphasis goes in a different way than making the rhythms dotted. I've written out a couple of examples of how you might practice these measures in triplets. So this is one, I, you can even put it your metronome on 5-4 and practice this a couple of, of times through. So I'll demonstrate this for you. You could even articulate each note of the, each of the first notes of the triplets, if that kind of just helps you think, think even more triplet-esque. And what that does is it puts the emphasis on different notes. So we move, we see these first notes often as important notes in a phrase like this, and it just kind of changes where our eyes land. So in the same way, I have written this out for a measure 109 as well. All right, so I will play this bottom. Um, Staff. All right, I almost don't recognize it because I've been practicing it um, in my groups of four, but I'll show you that one more time and I'll articulate the beginning of each triplet note. It's really important in these um, sections with the 16th notes that you find a lot of different ways to practice them, finding different rhythms, um, grouping your notes differently. Practicing like this can be kind of a mind-bending experience. It can really help our brain and our fingers work out uneven movements in our fingers. One teacher explained it to me like this. You've got to put the emphasis on a different syllable so that your fingers have a new experience with the same notes. It can take a little while to get in the groove of this practice method, but changing the rhythms of the fast technical passages is a very effective way to practice. Thank you for watching this video. Once again, my name is Jessica Lindsay, and I am the Associate Professor of Clarinet at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. I have enjoyed speaking about practice strategies for preparing the 2022, 23, 
North Carolina Band Masters Association All State Etude for Clarinet for Grades 11 12, which is an excerpt from the Clarinet Concerto by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. <laughs> 